Yes, guys. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Welcome back to another show. Um, yeah, uh, I ain't been around since Friday. I ain't been feeling very good. I ain't gonna lie. I feel like shit. Um, hay fever season's upon us, and I feel I've got a cold at the same time, and I feel like I feel like hell, sweating buckets already. It's mad. Um, but guys, we've got loads to talk about. We're gonna talk about the Man United game. We've got a fallout from that. We've got to talk about this Ruben Alberin news that is going around that he signed a three-year contract. I don't know how much that's true, but we're going to talk about it. And we're going to talk about Mo Salah potentially leaving Liverpool this summer. But before we start, guys, please don't go straight and hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the share button. And of course, go and subscribe to K-Mac's channel as well. And introducing my man, K-Mac, how are you doing, fella? I'm all right, mate. I'm all right. Um, everyone seems to have kind of lost it and... Right, the swinging off, swing, swinging, swinging off the off the nooses already. Everyone's doom and gloom about about it, but <clears throat> it's the game. It's the game that we were going to drop points in. Let's be honest. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're gonna, obviously we're going to, you know, probably talk about uh, this Man United fallout first. But big up to everyone in the chat. I hope you're all doing good, guys. Already seventy four people in here. Let's try and get up to a hundred likes. In the next, I don't know, 30 minutes or something. Let's see if we can do that. So make sure you hit the thumb button. Let's yeah, get hit them it, uh, likes yeah. up, guys. There you go. Smash the thumb. Let's get them likes up. So, then Paul Man United on Sunday. Massive game for Liverpool. They're probably their hardest away game, you know, on paper. Um, but as Gary Neville said, it's probably Liverpool's easiest game. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and we draw two all. Um uh, I, I'm just lucky I had a cold and I'm feeling rough because I think I'll, if I went live uh, Saturday, Sunday night, yeah, I might have been banned. So, I, 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 <laughs> you know, and people might be falling out of me right now, the things I had to say. So I'm glad I had time to actually think about my words properly. Um, but look, it was not good. It was not. I don't know what's happened to this team lately you know we've i do back, we've gone back to picking favorites again instead of the right people that are playing um I'm, I'm gonna keep saying it on this channel i've said it on monty's channel some people are starting to agree with me now so is not a midfielder um yeah. he's a he winger can't, he can't build up play from midfield he gives away everything in that area alexis McAllister and tyra when do good again um the strikers are dog crap. Simple as that. I'm actually starting to get really annoyed with Darwin Nunes now. And this is not... I love the guy. And I understand why our fan base really love him. But I am starting to get a little bit of annoyed with him now. Really am. Uh, Mo Salah. We're going to get to Mo Salah chat later. So I'll leave that later because I've got some things to say about that guy. Luis Diaz stepping up as he always does. But it was a shite show. Absolute cack um, against a Man United team that are not very good right now. They let you play. I mean, as as Gary Neville said, on paper, it's Liverpool's hardest away game. In reality, it's Liverpool's easiest. Klopp said it after himself after the game. You know, if Arsenal play that Man United team playing like that, they'd destroy them. Klopp, you should be asking yourself, why aren't we destroying them? Um, we learnt no lessons from the FA Cup game, in my opinion. Zero lessons. Zero. I blame obviously I blame the players because at the end of the day they're to blame because they didn't put the ball in the back of the net. But there's some things that still annoyed me tactically. But what what what's your feelings of the game, my friend? What was your feelings? Um look, we look, we played Man United. <laughs> this is crazy, by the way. We played Man United three times this season. We've had 87 shots and we've scored four goals from open play. Mm. That's all you need to say. Like, we're just not scoring against them. And and it's it's weird. It's just weird. Like, they give you so much space and so much time. It's like, I don't know, it's like the players like kind of freeze and they go, hang on a minute, this isn't this isn't normal. I'm not supposed to have this much time. I'm not supposed to be in this much space. What do I do? What do I do? Well, you just score, mate. But no, you pass it. Or you take a shot at the wrong time. Or you just do the wrong thing. It's like, I don't know. They've got a weird thing about them. Like, 
they're really good at being shit. And they know how to be shit, if that makes any sense. And yeah. they're sixth the table, mate. How are they sixth in the table? They've conceded more, more shots than Luton. <laughs> like, Luton are almost bottom. It's nuts. But, but mate, why the hell are we playing kids in pressure cooker games? When you've got your seniors on the bench, like, like what's Canate? Like, doesn't he trust Canate in the big games now? Like, he plays him against yeah. Sheffield, but he won't play him against Man United away. Like, have a word. Like, how is Gomez not starting now? Like, how is Gomez not starting? Like, I love Bradley. <laughs> how is Gomez playing? Because like, Robbo, because Robbo <laughs> came back. Oh, <laughs> big up Jasmine with the super. Jamie seven the... shots. I oh, know it's it's mad. <laughs> uh, thank you, Jasmine, for the super chat. Always appreciated. Uh, Jamie, the sports lie issue is another case of cock put in square pegs in round holes. Drives me absolutely nuts, and I won't miss the way he plays. Uh, plays players not in actual system makes it even harder. Yeah, I, I'm with you on the sports lie stuff. I, I am with yeah. you. I, 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 I'm going to chat about the sports lie stuff in a minute because I, I spoke about this last week about. Certain players for me have to play in this midfield if we're going to play the way Klopp wants them to play. And I've always said, I don't mind the way we play, it's just put players in that position that benefit the game more. Um, look, big up ends in the chat as well. You're doing well, man. Um, my my uh, real really bit... scousers hit the nail on the head there, by the way. If, if that comment, it's a really good comment. And and I'm I, sorry to put in, but he also did the same with Canate in Europe. And he missed the Man United game for the um, for the cup, for the uh, the quarterfinal or semi final, no quarterfinal. Mm. He did exactly the same. He played Canate in the wrong game and he got injured. Did the same. Sheffield United got injured, couldn't play for this game. Did the same in the in the Europa League, got injured, couldn't play. You know, keep on doing the same stuff. It's gonna catch you out. Sorry, go on, mate. Yeah. I was he was he injured then? Because I don't I, I don't know. I've Did you see his knee? Injured. Like he got studs in his knee on the. Um, so why is he on the bench? It, it looked it looked nasty on the she- for the Sheffield United game. Why is he on the bench then? Uh, I, I, that, that's what I mean. He played the whole game, by the way. He, if, he didn't come off against Sheffield United. He still played. So this is the issue. And um, if you go put someone on the bench, but you say they're not quite fit, then don't put them on the bench because a lot of fans will just see it as like if he's fit enough for the bench why aren't he playing don't, you know, don't they do a cause... fitness test before they go on the bench yeah um, I just I just think it's what's the fitness test like <laughs> I just, I, I, if he was fit enough to be on the bench he's fit enough to play isn't he so I don't know why I understand yeah. he's on the bench then. so just leave him out the squad and we got no we won't even be talking about it this is the thing exactly. if Canate's not even in the match day squad and he got injured against Sheffield United we're not going to talk about it because he's not available. But if he's on the bench, it means he's available. So we have to chat about it. Um, yeah, Kwanzaa made a mistake for the first goal. There's no ifs or buts about that. It was a, uh, it was poor, it was poor play by him under no pressure whatsoever, giving away a silly ball. Um, obviously he almost Bruno's... did it. He almost, he almost did it in the first two minutes of the game. By the way, yeah, Bruno Kwanzaa had Kwanzaa had a mistake in him that game. You could tell. He was nervy. Yeah. He's a young lad. He's a young lad. He's 21. He's going to make mistakes. <laughs> Look, Virgil and Canate make mistakes. Virgil makes mistakes. He's the best in the world. Of course, a 21 year old kid's going to make mistakes yeah. at times, especially playing the way we do. You know, we play such a high line and push so high up, you know, and express ourselves and defence the forward line that our centre backs are more exposed than most centre backs in the Premier League. So, the guy, if they get a mis- if they make a mistake, it's gonna be punished. You know, if if Arsenal's defenders make a mistake, it won't be punished so much because the way they defend is completely different to Liverpool. You, you look at it, you look at it, though, mate. It's it was lopsided, like experience wise. You know, you had you had a thirty year old in Robbo, then you got a thirty two year old in Virgil Van Dijk, then you got two twenty year twenty one year old and kids. Then the, two, then the two kids have just came through the first team this year. Yeah? It's like it's like very lopsided. You know, it lopsided. was very lopsided, but yeah. you know it's a great finish by Bruno Fernandez. I can't doubt him that. I don't know what Kelleher's doing, by the way. <laughs> I just don't know. He why does Keller... that though, doesn't he? He, he but... does that though. He comes out. He comes out of his box quite a lot, like to I, receive the ball. I know he, he wants to receive the ball. the ball there, but 
as soon as he sees Canati, it's not going to pass him the ball and he's going across the field. He should. he should be start pedalling backwards. I can understand the position first time round, but no, yeah, I, I I agree. But it's criminal to players play a blind square ball. Like it's criminal. He did it blind, mate. Like, like I get, I I, I get the fact that like you know it's kind of drilled into you, you know, doing those type of things. Mm. But <laughs> it's a it's a make or break. It's a make or break thing that happens in a game. Oh, but, it certainly is. But that should not be the equaliser. I'm sorry. <laughs> Shouldn't be yeah. the equaliser. That should be like 3 1. <laughs> no, it should be, man. It should, it, 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 the, way we pl- the way we played this game was. They had no shots in the first half. That's nuts. Yeah, they had none in the so first dominant. half. We dominate. It's just our finishing and her. What? It's our, it's our intelligence in front of goal. It's not just our finishing. Yeah. Because if you actually look at the chances, we didn't create too many. Right, you should score at moments. It was the, uh, it was where we got in the box and never picked either the right pass or the right yep. shot. Or do that another pass. That was the problem. Or play another pass. Like, that was you the can problem. Play them. <laughs> you can that, play around them. <laughs> There's that many of you. <laughs> they're so easy to play against. You're yeah. getting in behind Man United with every single attack, and then you never played the right pass or you never played the right shot. And that would obviously be driving the manager mad. It was driving me mad watching it. Most it was of like, there was players. like three square ball tap-ins, honestly. Three square ball yeah. tap-ins. Nunes, Nunes had one, Salah had one, Sabolsa had one. All just square ball, just knock it knock it left or right. There's a guy stood there to tap it in the net. Like, just our do passing, it. Like, honestly, our passing man. game, what has happened to our passing game? <sighs> wait, what, wait, uh, Dominic Sabolsa can't pass the ball no more. Like, that uh, is uh, scary, how you can go from someone being so good to so crap. Like, honestly. It's it's <laughs> night and day, isn't it? It, it? Like, literally, the only two people who can pass the ball is Otaro Endo and McAllister. I know. And it's lucky. The, and we're they're, really lucky. They're the <laughs> only they two can't, pass the ball. They're the only <laughs> two they people. Can't, that... We're literally screwed. <laughs> If they can't, it, it's literally um, it's literally Virgil van Dijk sixty yarders. <laughs> it, 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 it's just mad to me. Uh, Johnny Ten Gun says, "Big up the super chat, man. Much love." Says Liv- uh, uh, Liverpool's Harvey, chaos Harvey football. Allen's, Harvey Elliott's pass chaos. is incredible, by the way. Oh yeah, like, is is yeah. Liverpool's chaos football doesn't win titles. <laughs> Look, that that is a conversation we might have to have after Klopp leaves, and we're going to just you know we're going to have to talk about the Klopp era once he's gone. And have a real in-depth look at it. There's a lot of Liverpool channels. I can tell you right now, there's a lot of big, big Liverpool channels that won't have the clock conversation because they're just gutless. Yeah, they won't have the clock conversation. But I can tell you what, right now, I will. I will have the clock I conversation well. next at the end of the season. We just need to. Uh, everyone just thinks he's just the greatest thing since sliced bread. We man. we don't dodge this stuff, do we, mate? Mm. I can tell you um, why we don't win titles. Like, I can tell you why we haven't won titles. And 87 shots in three games. <laughs> four goals. 80, 87 <laughs> shots and four goals. Do you know how mad that is? From open play. <laughs> so, look, when Liverpool made the substitutions and they brought, they brought Harvey Elliott and Curtis Jones on and took Sir Bosley off, do you see how much better... And, and Mo Salah come off, by the way. Does anyone see how much better of a football team we are? Yeah, I know. Do you know I mean, do you how much better of a footballing team we are? Not a not a better side because the players that went. I mean, a footballing team. Look how we get the ball down and play better football when certain players go off our pitch. It's not a we coincidence. Could have, we we could have scored two more goals. I know we were two. I know we were two all, but we could have scored two more goals. On top of that, in injury time, because of Elliot and Jones. Yeah, Jones, like, and and you know, Jones just does what needs to be done. Like, did you see? Did you see him take that yellow card because Salah was arsing around in the middle of the pitch, yeah. turning into blind alleys, putting us under pressure. Uh, Man, I'm get, but I'm he gonna... just he, he does what needs to be done. There's so many players that wouldn't have took that yellow. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, yeah, there's I, players I, that I, just would not have took that yellow, and Man United could have got a third. Like, yeah, how clean but... through. I will say one thing again. Klopp substitutions saved Liverpool again. Yeah. Um, 
he does get his subs right. I, I'm going to give Klopp his credit here. He, he, he's used to substitutions all season. has been fantastic. Um, I'm starting to feel like the reason they're really good is because he brings players on that make us play better football. <laughs> I'm not being dishonest here. Like, I'm not being I agree. Like, I think we look better as a footballing team when people like Curtis Jones and Harvey Elliott play because they like to get hold of the ball and play. They play passes. They play passes around the corners. Harvey Elliott's got a good final ball at him on that cross on the right-hand side. Curtis Jones keeps the ball. You know, it's just simple things that make us build better. I keep saying, I've said this week after week after week, Liverpool want to build from midfield. That is the way we play now. That's why we bought Alexis McAllister, right? We want to build from midfield. We don't build from our fullbacks anymore. Trent and Robbo are not fullbacks like they used to play, and we build from them wide areas. We, we build from the middle. Look at all of Liverpool's plays built through the middle of the pitch. And Endo and McAllister can build from midfield. Sabozla I can't. So as soon as Sabozay comes off and you've got someone like a Harvey Elliott or a Curtis Jones there, you build from midfield better. Plus, you slow down your play. I personally feel we play too quickly. Yep. I think Good we off. actually play. I think we play too clip, uh, too quickly at times. I agree. And I think when you play a little bit slower and you pick the right pass, you're more effective. I think Gary Neville actually said that in commentary. He said it seems backwards, but making these substitutions made Liverpool play slower because they're playing slower there and they're playing more intelligently. And we looked at a more attacking threat against Man United playing slowly and playing the right passes than we did with all this 100-mile-an-hour football stuff. Uh, 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 and that shows for me, that's why the, his subs are working this season because he brings on players that can slow the game down, play the right pass at the right time, and we always look better for it. Against oh. United, Arsenal, if they were playing United yesterday, they would have destroyed them 6 0. Because they would have. They'd, they'd have scored set pieces against them. Yeah, they'd and they don't play as. They Arsenal terrible. won't play as fast as we do, but they play a little bit slower, but they always play the right pass, right pass, right pass. And then they keep the pressure on at a high end of the pitch in a, in a defensive structure where Liverpool are just erratic. You know, look at Liverpool's defending from a high standpoint. Liverpool get the ball up the final end of the pitch, yeah, where they want to be. They want to be dominant at that final end of the pitch, knocking the ball back, playing extremely quickly. As soon as they lose the ball, Man United are in on their goal straight away. How many one times hit. does that happen every one hit. game? It happens every day, but as soon as we start to play slower and um, just play the ball, play the right pass, maybe go sideways for a little bit, slow down the play, get possession of the ball again, we're harder a counter on. So I, I feel like there's going to have to be some, I think Klopp's going to look at it and have to look at it now and go, right, where, what's the best thing? Not the best players. What's my best thing? Again, I think favourites come into it a lot. Joe Gomez has done nothing wrong at left back. And as soon as Robbo's fit, he plays. Like, as soon as he's fit, he plays. Um, I, 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 not playing Kanate in this game, playing him against Sheffield United was a mistake, if you ask me. I agree. It, it's just, and Sabozla in midfield. Uh, I just, I don't get the Sabozla stuff. I, I look at Sabozla and I feel like he's more of a, a floating 10. You want Sabozla to be at the end of build up play, not All in amongst finger. it. You know, if you look at Sabozla's strengths, is his goal creation. His goal creation is very good, yeah. He creates opportunities, yeah. At, at, He's very quick. He can dribble and take players on. He's got a good long shot. He's got a good hit, yeah? If you're building from midfield in them areas in midfield where you want to keep the ball, play inch quick passes, keep the possession high up the pitch, hold on to the ball in dangerous areas guy. of the pitch, Sabozla is not your guy for that. That no. don't mean he's a bad player. It means he just needs to play further up the pitch in a more yep. advanced role. He needs yep. to play in that floating 10 where he can go wide, he can come inside. He can go wide again, you know, and he, he's on the he, he's on the edge of everything. That's where you want Sabozlai. 
not in the middle of midfield trying to build up play. It uh, it, it just doesn't. He looks lost. Yeah, he looks lost there. He, he and he also, there. he also he also looks shattered as well. He's doing way too much running. Like he's covering too much ground constantly. Like I get that he's got. I get that he's a he's a he's a fit player, but he's not the guy you want doing all that donkey work. Like he's doing too yeah. much dog work. He's doing too much dog work because Endo and Mac can't get around as much. Like mm. that's Endo's job. It's Endo's job. Like. He, he should be doing a cover in there. It shouldn't be, shouldn't be Dom. Should, Dom should be in the attacking areas. Like, I don't know, man. I, I just, I just feel like he's, I just feel like he's suited for the left side or the right side in attack. Yeah, like, and I, I, you know, I, I he said goals. this. He scores goals. He creates goals. Like he's got an incredible cross on him. Like, and I don't want him taking corners. He's crap at taking corners now. <laughs> like, how yeah. crap are our players at taking corners? Just, uh, I can't uh, wait for Trent to come back, honestly. When uh, set pieces uh, are just better. Uh, set pieces <laughs> taking this naff. It's, it's just so bad. And I, I think like, why have we got why have we got our central defenders up if you're playing a short corner? Make that make sense. Because you just had yeah. them right up the other end of the pitch to then play it short and for them to not even get it. I'm like <laughs> Yeah, and, and, and I can't look. Nunez is the... garbage. Someone just write Nunez is garbage. Nunez the... is garbage. At the end of the day, <laughs> yesterday, uh, Liverpool uh, on Sunday, Liverpool should have beat Man United. So I can't. I'm not going to blame yeah. Klopp for us losing that game. The players just didn't put the ball in the back of the net. So the bo- players are at fault there. But what I'm getting at is that I, I just feel like Robbo shouldn't be playing for Liverpool, in my opinion, at this moment in time, because Gomez done nothing wrong. Yeah. I don't think Sabozla should be in the midfield three right now. I'd rather Harvey Elliott or Curtis Jones right there I agree. at this moment in time because they play the ball, they pass the ball better than Sabozla does. If Sabozla's go play, tell you what, here's one. Mo Salah's been dog shit. And I mean dog shit. He looks like he wants to leave. Play Sabozla where Salah plays. Yeah. Just give him a game there. Don't disagree. Not, you know, he doesn't have to play as wide as Mo, more of an inside forward role, and play Sabozla in that role. I, where mean, I bet he's far better in that I mean, more advanced I mean, role what, than he is in the midfield three. What's Mo doing anyway, wide? Because he doesn't take the man on and he hasn't got the pace to get past anyone anymore. So, what is Mo doing wide? Like, he's not doing anything wide. So, I totally agree. Like, play Dom there or even, even try Trent. Like, Trent wants to be more involved. Trent wants to get get more more involved in the play. Play Trent mm. in there, like play Trent as a wide wide right, like right wide right attacker. Like he's got end product, he's got goals, he's got an hit on him. Like I think Trent would be much more influential right now. Like I know yeah. everyone's saying like you know Mo gets goals, Mo gets assists, blah 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 blah. The rest of the team cook when he's not in it. Score loads of goals when we're not in it when he's not in it. Because everything goes to him, like you know, Dom could only Dom could only do better, couldn't he, if he's played there, or even bring Dom off the bench, like give Diaz give Diaz a rest sometimes, like play him on the left. We've got plenty of players. Like Harvey Elliott's done nothing wrong, nothing wrong since he played. Yeah. Every game he's been brilliant. Like he needs a run now. Like he got a penalty. Like I don't know people are saying it wasn't a penalty. His, oh, knee, his knee took his foot. His knee took his foot. <laughs> like, yeah, watch it and, again. <laughs> and like Gary Neville said, the slide still takes him out. Yeah. You know, the first touch don't take him out, but the second touch does because yeah, his leg the le- his leg is where Harvey would put his foot. So, yeah, yeah. take them out. Uh, big up, Johnny says, City play with science and not emotionally charged. Oh, yeah, I agree. Spot on. I, 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 I agree. agree with that. I think the team, there's too much emotion in the team right now. And I think the whole thing that Klopp's leaving and they're trying to win it for him, I think I think that's going to derail us. Like we should have, we should have been out of sight in the first half. Like I think, I think the emotions get into us. Like I do worry. Like we were lucky against Sheffield United to even get the goals in the end because they had chances. Brighton were in the game at one stage. Like we're giving teams chances, but we're battering them. 
Like we should just be putting these like three yeah. nil, three yeah. nil to the good in the first half. I, I agree. Well. Let's do it like this, right? So Bosla is not playing well at the moment. He can't pass. Um, he's struggling in games. He gets lost a little bit in that midfield. Right, I should drop him and take him out of the team. Right, yeah. now let's talk about Mo Salah. Was, right, I'll ask everyone in the chat before I ask K-Mac this question. Everyone in the <laughs> chat, just a yes or no in the chat. Did Liverpool's front three play better football together when Mo wasn't there? Now, in January till we came back, and this is not a dig at Mo. Please don't think I'm digging at Mo. I'm just talking here. Did Liverpool's front three look more fluid and play better football when Mo wasn't there? Everyone saying yes. Shock. That our best run. That was going like four goals a game, weren't we? And Mo's a quality footballer, right? Yeah. And this is not me having a go at Mo. And what I think happens when Mo plays is that the rest of the forward line just give Mo the ball. And try and make let you know it's when Stevie used to play for Liverpool, yeah. Liverpool had good players, yeah, but then they just make sure if if Liverpool were down on their luck, they'd just look at Stevie to turn us around and win us the game. And they usually would. And I think they look at Salah like that as well. And you know, they don't do what they should do, and they let Mo take all the all the, all, all the benefit. I literally feel like Liverpool play more fluidly when Mo's not there because Mo's so strategic in his position you know Mo's not got the pace and athleticism he used to have and he's not as fluid with his play as he used to be compared to your Jotters your Darwins and your Luis Diaz's so we're a bit more one-dimensional with Mo up front if that makes sense you know I, I, yeah. I just feel like we're one-dimensional with Mo up front and that's not Mo's fault as I said it's just because Mo's been legendary for this football team we just look to Mo to win us the game, you know, and that's down on the players as well. And that's why it's weird. It's just one of them weird things. It's, it's When your best player don't play, you can sometimes look better. It's a weird thing in football. I've seen it with De Bruyne. De Bruyne had a year out at City. City still won the league title and they played a little bit better without De Bruyne at times because all those your best player, they took him out and still done things. I, I, I see that with Liverpool a little bit sometimes. You know, Sally, your best player, and we play better without him at times. It's a weird one. Look, we play better when he went off the pitch. We can't deny it. It's um for me. It's for me. It's starting to starting to feel a little bit like a soap opera. Like it seems to be seems to be about one player. Like. Like even even if you look at like the build up to the game, like you did an interview, you know what I mean. It's all about Mo. Like, you know, we're a team. You know, everything seems to be about like Mo's records, and if he scores this, he's going to do this, or if he scores that, he's this, and no one else has done this in in the Premier League history, and no one else has done this in Liverpool history. Like, I don't give a crap. Like, I don't give a crap. My, like, I want Liverpool to win the league. Like that's what's more important. Like if he'd have missed that penalty, which which I'm not being funny, <laughs> if their goalkeeper had gone the right way and in any form, he would have saved it because it was a poor penalty. Um, you know, McAllister stood there holding the ball for him. I don't know why McAllister. Uh, well, what's all that penalty? about? Like, I, I don't it's, know why it's, McAllister yeah, I mean, should be Liverpool's penalty taker. Simple as that. I mean, let and, me just, and, let me and just, all we're let me talking just about this. still. Yeah, Let me just get the IFL's chat, man. He says, Jamie, analysis is poor. You have to see the teams you played against for uh, for you to even establish that argument. Here's another argument I can put at you. All Liverpool fans said we're, we're going to be in trouble when Salad's not there. All Liverpool fans said Liverpool going to be in trouble now. We're Mo going to AFCON, then getting injured. You know, we're going to be a bit in trouble without Mo there, but we played better without Mo. I know what you're saying, the teams we played against. Is, is played against Newcastle, Chelsea, Arsenal. Yeah, we played. Um, who else? There was there was a, some good teams we played. By the way, we we played against teams Fulham, that we twice. It, it's just a lot of people said. You know, I I was I do my channel every day, and people came on there and said 
Salah would Liverpool would struggle without no Salah. Liverpool didn't struggle without Salah. I think we're just coming to a time now where Liverpool are moving on. People don't like it. Liverpool fans don't like it. We're one of the only fan bases who don't like moving on. And I just feel like eventually Liverpool are going to have to move on without Mo Salah. And it shows for me that Liverpool can play and play well without Mo Salah in the team. And it's not the end of the world. But I understand what you're saying at the same time. OK, Newcastle, Bournemouth. OK, these are all 4-0, by the way. Sorry. Newcastle, four goals. Bournemouth, four goals. Chelsea, four goals. Burnley, three goals. Brentford, four goals. Luton, four goals. Uh, obviously, Forest was was one nil. Man City, uh, one goal. Brighton, two goals. Sheffield United, three goals. Obviously, Salah played the Brighton and the Sheffield United games, but um, all the others look pretty good. Obviously, we got beat by by Arsenal, but we kind of beat ourselves in that game. Let's be honest. Like, so I feel said basically weak teams in. Really? Okay, I thought they were all pretty doing pretty well. In, the, in would you call May United? Would you call May United a strong team? Well, he played against Man United, didn't he? Um, it was nil nil. Yeah. That was before he went. I don't get this well, argument. Yeah, Liverpool, Liverpool's most important striker right now is Diogo Jota. It's as simple as that. People might not. People don't like it, right? Liverpool fans don't like it. We can tell some don't like it in the chat right now. Diogo Jota is Liverpool's most important forward, and that's just a fact. He's Guys most, nine goals in sixteen starts in the Premier League. Jota. He's our most. He's our oh, most clinical is. striker. So when Salah weren't about, we had Jota about. Jota, Darwin and Diaz was an excellent combination because all three of them had great chemistry between each other and they played really well. And uh, and plus, we were defensively better. We were defensively better as well. There is a massive issue with our right-hand side of the pitch. Yep. Surely people understand that our right-hand side of the pitch is dog shit. Like, uh, are we going to pretend that our right side of the pitch ain't great? Like, Conor Bradley or Trent, Sabozalai and Salah is defensively weak. Yeah. Very, very weak. Sabozalai can't defend. Salah doesn't come back. And Conor Bradley might be a better defender than Trent, but he's a young kid. And Trent's all about going forward. So defensively, our right side of the pitch is always unbalanced. But which is why we get why we get attacked down every time. <laughs> but arguably, our right side of the pitch is our best attack. In if yeah. you look, like if you're playing Sabozla, Trent, and Salah going forward, that is Liverpool's best front three. You know, on that side of the pitch, that right side of the pitch. But for a defensive point of view, it's not defensively. There, there's no defender there. There's literally no defender in that right side of the pitch. Suppose I can't defend, Trent can't defend, Salah doesn't come back and defend anymore. So on that right side of the pitch, we've got three amazing players going forward, but not one defender. And that's going to be that's the which case. Which is why there. you need, which is why you need Mack in there for me. You need Mack so in you, there, and and you need and you need Canate, like all the time, like. I know I know fans aren't gonna like this, but the reason why why we don't win the league and we haven't won the leagues is because we've only got one clinical striker at the club. Like that is just the facts of the matter. Like Mane wasn't clinical, Bobby wasn't clinical, Salah's not clinical, Nunes isn't clinical, Diaz isn't clinical, Gapco's not clinical, only Jota is. Only Jota is a clinical striker. Like, you need to give these guys one in seven. Like, Jota's like a one in two. If you get another clinical striker, then you can afford to have your other guy injured for three months of the season. That's just that's just the facts of the matter. You need a guy that can score your goals, and we create so many chances and don't score enough goals. It's just a fact. Like, we're on, we're on, we're on schedule now to get about 80. 85 goals this season, like in the Premier League. Right. Everyone needs Last to season we got 76. This season we're on 72 now. 
guys, clinical and getting shit loads of goals is not the same thing. You know, um, Salah is a goal machine, but he's not clinical. No, that it, it, there's a difference. He's a goal machine. Salah's a goal machine. You know, Salah get twenty. Salah will always probably get twenty goals a season. But how many chances does he need in front of goal to get twenty chance Scott to, to score a goal? That's what I mean. We mean by clinical. Was yep. it against Sheffield United that he had fourteen shots and oh, scored God. one? It, it's the you most know, in the league need, in, history. In that's what game. we mean by that's what we mean by clinical guys. Not that he's a shit goal scorer. It's different, man. It, 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 it's that's why. You know, uh, clinical under pressure. You, we've you had, scored, yes, we've had enough time to find another clinical striker. Like I know someone just said, you, you're acting like you like like they grow on trees. We've had enough time to find one under Klopp. Klopp's been with us nine years. Yeah, he, he's only got one. <laughs> I, I, I just the teams just... that have got clinical strikers. <laughs> if Liverpool, if Liverpool had Jota playing against United, I think we score one of them chances. Yeah, we do. Yeah, I think Jota scores one of them chances. It's just because Jota's a bit more clinical. Jota won't score as many goals as Mo Salah, right? Exactly. But he's more clinical. It, it, it's, it's, it, it's, it's a difference. Now, if if I've got a one-on-one, if I've got a player who's going one-on-one ten times in a game, I'd rather it be um, Jota than Salah. 100%. Because I think Sa- Jota probably puts eight out of ten away. And Salah probably put six out of ten away. Well, put it put it this way, put it this way. When Tottenham equalised, and it was was it three all or was it two all? I can't remember. Oh, now. A three all game, yeah. Jota, yeah. That beautiful Jota goal. scored that goal in like the ninety fourth minute or something. That's clinical. Yeah. That's, who that's who is the player clinical. that you want to take that chance? Do you want it to be Salah? Do you want it to be Nunes? Do you want it to be Diaz? Do you want it to be Gapko? Or do you want it to be Jota? Yeah. Who scores that chance? There's only one guy that scores that chance for me. And it's Jota. Yeah. And we score lots of goals, guys. And this is not us saying we don't score goals. We score lots of goals. We're the top goal scorers in Europe in the top five leagues. So we score a lot of goals. It's been yeah. clinical. We had no one yesterday in that Man United game being clinical. That's why we drew the game. That's why we, sh- you know, if you look how many shots and chances we created, there was not one per. If we had a more clinical finisher, we win that game of football. Also, our passing from midfield is atrocious if it's not McAllister or Endo on the ball. You know, we lose so much on that right-hand side with uh, Sabozna and Salah playing together, in my opinion. I don't think it's ever worked yet this season since they played together. But but this Salah thing, look, obviously rumours about Mo Salah have come up again today, guys. And uh, I don't know how much you believe it. I don't know if I believe it. But op- apparently Saudi has said that they want Mo Salah still. Apparently, there's talks that Mo Salah would be interested in the move to Saudi this summer. Um, but we've got to remember, there's one guy that's back at Liverpool that you should fear, and that's Michael Edwards. And I don't know about you, everyone in the chat and yourself came out, but I, I feel like Michael Edwards might let Mo Salah go this summer. I think if we can get enough money in for Mo with one year left, with the way we're playing at the moment, uh, I think he... There's a reason FSG like Michael Edwards. FSG said when they got Michael Edwards back, the reason they wanted him back is because he is not emotional. Basically, he's cold. That's basically what they said. He doesn't have emotion in transfers. He doesn't look at transfers emotionally. He sells at the right time and he buys at the right time. He doesn't have that emotion. Now, I don't think personally Jurgen Klopp would ever sell Mo Salah. Yeah? I think we'd all agree with that. I think if it was up to Jurgen Klopp, he would never, he would never, ever, ever sell Mo Salah. But Mark Edwards is a different beast and, uh, I don't know about you guys in the chat and you self came back, but I, I, I feel like this could be Mo Salah's last season at Liverpool because he ne- if he's not going to sign a new contract, if, if Michael Edwards has got a win that Salah wants 400 grand a week, I don't think Michael Edwards is giving him 400 grand a week. I think we can all agree with that, yeah? 
I'd be shocked. I'll tell. Think, I'll tell you what. I'll tell I think you what. He and, sells this, him. and this is and this is through this is through what's actually happened at the club. Mo Salah's next contract. He's taking a pay cut to stay at Liverpool under Edwards. He's taking a pay yeah. cut. He's not get. He's not getting a pay rise. What does he get a pay rise for? He's getting older. <laughs> he's getting a pay cut. Like he'll want. He'll want him to drop his wages by fifty to a hundred grand. Seriously, if he wants him to, if he, if he, if he's going to sign again, he's not getting. He's not going to pay rise. You don't get pay rise when you get older at Liverpool. <laughs> you get a reduction. Um, for me, I've got to. I've got to be honest. He doesn't fit an Amarin system. He's not fast enough. He hasn't got. He hasn't got the um, the skills to get past players anymore. When's the last time you've seen him beat a man? Seriously, when's the last time you've seen him like dance around players like he used to? He's not doing that anymore. Like mm. he's not tracking back anymore. Like he's not putting the graft in, like the proper graft, the team graft. And if he's not going to do that for Amarin, he's not going to fit that system. And he loves a target man. He loves a target man. Nunez is gonna is gonna thrive under Amarin. And so is Jota. Really going to thrive those two players. Um, for me, I mean, I mean, you've got a perfect player there to to move into the most solid position for for an Amarin team, and that's that's Dominic Sabolsai. He, he he's perfect for it. He's got the pace. He's got the skill. He's got the end product. Like when he's in the attacking third, um, like him and Trent down that side is frightening. Like. That'd be frightening. That those two. Um, yeah, I, I, and, and you're going to get the best money you're ever going to get for Salah. Like you're going to get the best money under Edwards. Like people are saying, 100 million. I, I think, I think it's, I think it's more of 150 plus. Like Edwards is just a genius at getting money. Like, do you really think if we have Edwards, we would have got like 12 million for Henderson and and what what was it, 30 million for? For um, for me, uh, uh, for Fabinho, Fabinho, yeah, Fabinho, and um, and then and then like, what was it, thirty thirty six million for um for Mane? Do you really think you would have got that under Edwards? Not a chance. Add another ten, fifteen on top of all of those. He's the best, best in it, the business. It's look, I don't. I, I've said it multiple times. If if Mo wanted to sign a new deal and he didn't want to pay rise, then I'd probably sign to a new deal because it is Mo Salah. And I just feel like Mo at your club will get you goals. You know, even though he's not, you know, he, he'll always get goals, Mo. And he is very creative and he's a great footballer. There's no doubt about that. But Liverpool got to look to the future. You know, do you want to give someone who's going to be 32 a new contract worth 400 grand a week because he's going to have to have a pay rise, you feel, if he wants to sign a new deal at Liverpool. So the pay rise would have to come in. I don't think he'd sign. Look, he might. I don't know. Mo might go, right, my love for the club. I understand the position. I want to stay here, but I stay on the same money. You know, if that's the case, I think Liverpool probably sign him up. But if, if Mo wants 400 grand a week or close to 400 grand a week, at this moment in time, he's not playing like a player who should be getting 400 grand a week. And how long can Mo keep doing this as well? You know, how long can Mo keep playing the way he is, has been for Liverpool the last few years? Can he carry that on? Have any of us got any certainty that Mo can still be that player next year and the year after and the year after that on a massive contract? That's one thing we got to think about. That's, what's, that's why it's people like um, Rich Hughes and... Um, who's a sporting director and obviously a CEO who runs, runs the football club in Mark Edwards. They've got to, they've got to sit there and really think about it. Is Mo, is there any proof in the pudding that Mo Salah can continue at this level, this high level, high numbered level for the next year, two years, three years on 400 grand a week? Is there any proof in it? If there's none, they're quite not quite sure on it. And this is the time to let him go. They're going to let him go. The guy let him go. Let, let, they were let him go. I just Mo. I've never seen Mo substituted so much. 
Mo don't really argue when he gets subbed now. No. I know he's just come back from injury and he could be a bit not match fit right now. So I'm going to give him a bit of benefit of the doubt. He might not be match fit enough. You know, he hasn't played much since New Year's Day to where we are now, mid-April almost. So, second week of April, sorry. It, it, it just, he might not be match fit. He, he might not be match. So, it, give him a bit of benefit of the doubt there. Has a summer off, comes back. Looks great again. I just don't know. The Mo one is a weird one. I just feel like Liverpool go let him go. Yeah, I think I, I think um and you also have to look at it as well is who's available to replace him because because we talk about replacing Mo, but you can't replace Mo because if Mo's there then he's playing. So the other guy never gets a look in. That's just how it works. And he's not going to be a guy that's going to be coming off the bench. He don't have a four hundred thousand pound a week player coming off the bench. Like so so you're going to get a replacement in. And I just feel like there's so many out there that, that could be got. And I, I know people have like said this never happened, but, you know, Vinny Jr. is is getting racial abuse in Spain consistently. Like, if you're ever going to get a guy out of Real Madrid, then now's your chance to have a pop at him because you've got Mbappe incoming. He's going to take his position. Then you've got Endrick who's this absolute monster of a Brazilian. Where's he going to play? You've got Jude Bellingham, who's kind of playing as a forward. You've got Rodrigo, who's not happy, like Valverde, rumours with him. Like, like there's players there. Then you've got the likes of, you know, Florian Wirtz. Like, he's an absolute machine. And Musiala and Bakayoko. Like, there's plenty of players there. Like, and Kudos. People keep on talking about Kudos. Like, you know, there's another guy there. You could, there's plenty of players. And we scored a lot of goals when Mo wasn't in the team. That's just a fact. So we will carry on doing that. So we just keep on, yeah, Nico Williams is on that list as well, by the way. Um, but I think Nico Williams was a Dabby Alonso guy. So I wouldn't be surprised if he rocked up at uh, by Leverkusen. Um, but yeah, what I was saying is, um, we score a lot of goals when he's not there. So we'll still score goals. We'll still create chances. And you will see the goals increase with Nunes and a forward because look at the way Amarin plays. His striker gets 30 plus goals every season. Every season. Look at all the strikers that he's had. He gets a lot of goals out of that out of that, out of that guy up front. Um, and you won't need that many goals from, from that side. And we rely on Salah too much, if you ask me. Like, other guys should be stepping up more. But they can't when he's in the team. Mm -hmm. That's the issue. Yeah. It, there's a poll in the chat right now, guys. Uh, go and, uh, should we sell, should Liverpool sell Mo Salah? Yes or no? Go and vote in the chat, in the, on the live poll in the chat right now, guys. Um, Big up ends, man. We start talking about Salah and he pops up. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like with Mo is, oh, I just don't know. I, I really don't know sell Mo or not. It, it depends how much you go get for him. In Liverpool, cotton on that they can get like the hundred million for Mo Salah for a year left in his deal. I, I think they let him go. Uh, I do. I, I think they let him. Go. I think Mo would love to stay at Liverpool. I think Mo would love to stay at Liverpool Football Club. It's just that. Does he feel like Liverpool are going to want him to stay at Liverpool Football Club? Are they going to... Mo's still got a worth. And Mo will look at it thinking, right, I'm your top goal scorer for another year. I want to be rewarded for being that again. You know, I just don't know how much higher of 350 grand a week you can go on Mo Salah's contract. You know, it'd be 32. If Mo was 28... If Mo was 28, I'd say give him the world. Yeah, I, I, that's what I'd say. But being that he's 31, he'd be 32 next season. I just, I, I don't know. He's already had an injury. It looks like he's taken a while to get over this injury. It's, you know, first real time Mo's had a muscle injury as well. 
I just yeah, I don't know. I don't. It's it's a tough one for. Look, let's put it this way: Liverpool sold Mo Salah in the summer. I'm not going to be crying and losing sleep about it. If Liverpool keep Mo Salah, I'll be happy as well. I'm sort of happy at both sides of the sides of the coin at the moment. Liverpool kept him. I'd be perfectly fine with it. If they sold him, I'd be perfectly fine with it at the same time. It, it, now people. People get devastated. I, I've seen people talk about Salah. Oh, you can't let Salah go. Why? Why? Wow. Why? Like he, he's not going to stay forever. His his powers will wane eventually. You've got to move on. The um, thing about it. Look, the, the thing about it. Let let let's let's just be real here, okay? Like we don't drop when he's when he's not there. Like everyone's like, oh, if we sell Mo Salah, this or that, it hasn't happened. Like he's been to Afcons a lot, and we've still won all our games without him. Other players step up because other players are in the limelight, and it's not all about Mo. Mo's a stat padder. Like Mo was going to take that penalty regardless. Like it's just going to happen. Like it's just the way it is. Mo has to eat. Like none of the other players get to eat when Mo's this, there. This if is he a got great scraps, point. It is a great point by Scottish Bear. I, 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 Mo Salah, Edwards doesn't like aging players, and yep. we know this for a fact. Um, and the thing is, Edwards has got no one to argue with him now. Edwards has the power. You know, Edwards wanted to get rid of Milner and Henderson time ago, and obviously Klopp's a very powerful individual, and he has a hundred percent say of the ownership. So. If he's they stayed, so I, I I I literally feel now that Mark Edwards is in charge of the club. He's the CEO of FSG. He basically runs international affairs. So he basically runs Liverpool Football Club. He's going to be doing day to day running. I feel like he tells Richard Hughes not to give him a new deal, and we look for offers for him. It, it, it wouldn't shock me. Mark Edwards is cold man, but and this is what we need, by the way. We need. The backroom staff, the people that do all the business stuff, the transfers, the contracts, they should be emotionally detached. Yep. You know, no emotion. You know, don't do transfers for pure, oh, we've got to keep him because he's been here. No, if it's not right for Liverpool anymore, then let them go. It don't matter who they are. Guys, guys, what? watch the interview that Klopp did on Sky Sports. He said... He doesn't win trophies. He wins players. Yeah, that was mad. Are you are you out of your mind? That, like, that, like, that was... like, I don't win trophies at Liverpool. I win players. Well, what, he said it in his career, about? didn't it? What are you he there said, for? He sort of said... <laughs> it, it's a weird... It was it's a weird, weird comment. It it's was a, a weird, weird comment, comment to bring up. And it's before the Man United game, by the way. <laughs> it, it, Even the most important game of the season coming up. <laughs> Odd. Madness. Yeah, he makes trophies. That's it. He said he makes he makes relationships, not trophies. It, like, it's it's a weird <laughs> comment. It's a weird comment to make. I understand what he's trying to say is that he has great relationships with the players. And families and, and stuff like that come to football clubs, and he's a great man manager. I get what he's saying, I understand it. And that's what a lot of people love about Jurgen Klopp is that that father figure of a manager that he is. I don't, it's not but my it, dad, but it's just a <laughs> it's just a weird comment. It's just a collects relationships. It's just that's it. I collect relationships, not trophies. That was I don't it. See, that was I it. That's even that makes it sound even worse now, now that I've said it. <laughs> I don't see <laughs> crazy. I don't it's just weird because I wouldn't see Pep making that statement. I wouldn't see but maybe that's what just holds Klopp back a little bit more than a Pep Guardiola. You know, maybe that's what just holds Jurgen back a little bit more because Maybe that's just the thing. Is 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 um uh, Jurgen's persona and his personality just drives that way? And there's nothing wrong with having that personality and drive. If that's what 
makes you the person you are, that's who the person you are. You know, that's Jürgen Klopp's makeup. He's a he he's a family man. He likes his he's a football romantic. He likes having great relationships with players because that then for him makes players better. And if anything comes after that, that's a bonus. That's probably how he sees it, and that's his personality. You can't change the man for being the man. But yeah, it's just a that's mad like comment. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's just it's just a mad it's just a mad comment to make, ain't it? It's just that's like me go that's like that's like comment. me going to work and I've got like a target to hit. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, but don't yeah, but don't worry about the target. Like like I get on really well with the rest of the team. Yeah, but you're not hitting your target, mate. Like like that's your job. Like Okay, it's great that you can have a pint down the street with your mates who you work with, but you're not eating your target. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. I'll tell yeah, you what, I, though. I, I'll tell you what, though. Yeah. I, I, I'll tell you what, though. Um, and I'm not going to bet my house on it, but taking the emotion out of Liverpool, we will be a dynasty. We will be the Bob Paisley. We will go on and win trophies telling you take the emotion out of liverpool it's a good thing honestly more robotic that's what we need and we're not we're not going to do that if we don't start getting rid of those players but by getting rid of those those players that have been through all of it with Klopp, because and you also have to think about it as well does salah want to do this for the new guy yeah that's that's a big thing as well what's the new guy asking him to do that that... i don't know I think, I think, I think a lot of these players uh, we got at the club right now, their allegiance is more with Jurgen Klopp than it is. Yeah, Liverpool, there's, a, so. there's a, there's a few. There's, uh, there's, I think there's, I think there's a good handful, which are going to do really well under the new manager. Yeah. Um, and and it's probably because they're not Klopp favourites, and and they're ready to hit the limelight, like your Elliots and your Jones and your, you know, your Gomez's, you know. Even your Kellers, to be fair, and Jota. Jota doesn't get enough games, to be fair. Let's be honest. You know they're yeah. they're ready to they're ready to take to to, to take um to take hold and 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 show and Carvalho, by the way, Carvalho under <laughs> Amarin, he's Portuguese. Like I really look forward to seeing what he can do. He's been sensational on loan. Scored another two goals, by the way, in his last game. Yeah, that's what the and everyone about the clock comments in the chat. This Hull, Hull could be in the Premier League next season. The way they're going, by the way. This is what I'm saying <laughs> about Klopp. Klopp's done a world class job at Liverpool. There's no doubt about that. There's the, there's none. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. and as I said, his personality, is his personality, his makeup is his makeup. He can't pretend to be someone he's not. If Klopp is not as ruthless as a Pep Guardiola, Jurgen can't become ruthless overnight because it's just not his nature. You know, he, he does like building relationships. He likes building rapports. He likes building all this and he likes winning trophies. But, you know, that's his that's his personality and that's his that, that's him. We can't change who the man is, you know. Um, but look, some positives. Look, Liverpool, look, we dropped points against, uh, you know, hardest away game. We dropped points. We're now level on points of Arsenal. We're second in the league because of goal difference. And I think we're two points above Manchester City, yeah, or a point above Manchester City. Uh, it's yeah not where I'd want us to be. I'd want us to have won that Man United game, kept a nice little gap. Because it ain't been funny. This Arsenal team don't even look like the guy can see the goal, let alone lose the game of football. I, I, I don't know about everyone in the chat. I still make Man City favourites of the Premier League. Their fixtures coming up are dead easy. I think they're going to win every single game. I still think Arsenal will draw a game and drop points. I think City will still win the title. But we have put ourselves in a great position. We really have. We're on 71 points. I think we're all a bit down because we feel like we should have beaten that Man United team. And we should have, let's face it. Whatever the facts and problems are, we should have beaten that Man United team. We shouldn't be sitting here right now, a bit depressed about it. We should be positive because we should have beaten United, but we didn't. 
We've got three hard away games coming up as well. Fulham, Everton and West Ham, along with Atlanta away from home as well. So we've got four hard away games coming up. Does everyone see Liverpool winning them three away games? I want to ask everyone in the chat first. Everyone in the chat, do you see Liverpool winning all three of them away games to Fulham, Everton and West Ham? Because if everyone don't see that, then the points dropped against Man United is, that's the issue right there. Uh, Mosey Red says no. Some people say no, no. Yeah, defo. Everyone will be a tough game. We got Nathan Adrian, good. man. Yeah, I agree with Gareth, by the way. I see Everton being, being a draw. Because so there's too much emotion. Liverpool should beat Fulham, West Ham, and Everton. Yeah. They should. I already said if you got told these are Liverpool's fixtures towards the end of the season, you'd snap your hand off and go, Thank you very much. They're very winnable games, but they're all back to back away games. And I believe they're three games in eight days, if I'm correct. Yeah. It's a, a Saturday, a Wednesday, and a Sunday, isn't it? So they're three, they're three games in eight days, all away from home. It's going to be difficult. It's going, it, it, it's, it's going to be difficult. Arsenal got some difficult games as well coming up. My issue is City, guys. I'm going to keep saying it. Mate, 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 I'm City. telling you. It's City's league game. to lose. It's City's league to lose. City are going to win every game. I just watched City yeah. destroy Villa. And then who did they destroy on the weekend? Um, who do they play on the weekend? Was it Luton? No, it was Villa, wasn't it? Luton. They played Villa, wasn't it? They played Villa. They played Villa, but they played someone else as well. I can't remember who that was. I don't, I don't know why Villa rested all their players against City, by the way, either. I don't know what else about. Um, but um, Palace, Palace, Palace. Yeah, they beat Palace, didn't they? they beat Crystal. Yeah, Palace, Kevin De Bruyne yeah. scored scored two worldies. By the way, yeah, Crystal Absolute Palace worldies. How Crystal Palace didn't get a penalty in that game, I don't know. I, uh, well, it's because it's City, mate. Yeah, uh, uh, that <laughs> that game would have been. I know that game would have been a lot different if Palace were awarded that penalty and they scored it because they would have been two 0 up. How, how, been did, a Bright, lot of a how did Brighton game. not get a penalty, by the way? Yeah, but Lampety. Brighton. Got, yeah, but Brighton got well handed, didn't they? <laughs> what shocking! Yeah. There they were absolutely better shocking. forwards. They had a better striker. They had chances. They had a better strike here. And it's um, saying I always see online. I see this on Twitter a lot and amongst people, Liverpool fans, is they go, oh, when when teams play Liverpool, they turn into the greatest team that they could ever be. But when they play Man City and Arsenal, they're always getting smashed. And I've thought about this for a while now, and I thought maybe it's because Liverpool are actually easy to play against at times. Has anyone ever thought about that? You know, like Liverpool, where are Liverpool played Brighton and Brighton were like trying to be like Pep's Barcelona. It was an hard game. We played Sheffield United at home and that was a difficult game. Why, why are us when, when they go to Arsenal or Man City, why do they, why do they bend over and just take it and get smashed? And I'm like, I thought about it recently and I'm bit, now, now I'm thinking about it even more. Maybe. Maybe Liverpool are just easier to play against than Arsenal or Man City. Or they, or they, or they think they can beat us. Yeah. And they Why? don't think they can beat Man City. Exactly. And that's <laughs> Because they an normally issue. can't. <laughs> and they don't think they can beat Arsenal now. This is the no, problem. they don't think they can beat Arsenal now. Liverpool, teams feel like they can have a chance against us. So they have a go. Against City and Arsenal, teams don't feel like they can beat them no more. Don't people see that as a problem and a bit of an issue? Yeah. Don't people see that as a bit of an issue? That of, teams play us say. and feel like they can have a chance. Sheffield United went for us, guys. Yeah, they did. Sheffield United went for us at one all. They started attacking and going for us. Away! And I was like, we had to get Brighton, a goal Brighton. from a, a Wildy from McAllister to win that game. Brighton a had a Wildy. good goal as well, by the way. Brighton had a good go. So maybe we're just 
easier to play against than Arsenal or Man City. And why are we easier to play against? Who's the manager of Liverpool? No, I don't want to get down that route because everyone's going to go mad at me. But I'm you just saying. Going, you are going yeah, down I, that route. I, I, <laughs> I'm not taking we, you there. We, we, <laughs> You're going there yourself. <laughs> I, I just, yeah, I just, uh, we we have to, we play, for me, risk, we play. High risk, we play, high reward. Our, uh, our risk is too high now, in my opinion. I think we yeah. play. That's what, look, the way we play is one of the reasons why Liverpool are probably the most entertaining team in the Premier League to watch yeah, because to watch. of the risk we play at. We shouldn't be giving teams a chance. It bugs me when we're tuning up in a game. We just don't go, right, stop playing. Drop back five yards, just play yeah. football, play professionally. We don't have to play with this risk when we're tuning up. Why are we still playing? Why are we gunning forward? trying to get goals when we got the game won. Just play professionally from now. Drop back a little bit. Pick sit some, in your pick shape. Some, pick some Rafa Benitez football. I don't yeah, care. You don't need I to don't go care and if try and win every game 1-0 to the end of the season. I don't care. I don't care if every game we win is crap to the end of the season and it's 1-0. That's fine. Play Rafa Benitez football. I don't care. This is what you have to do to win the league. Like, don't do dumb stuff like you did against Man United. I agree. We played in Man United's hands for three games on the bounce. We did. <sighs> Man, United, Man United have got some kind of weird, weird voodoo spell on us or something. <laughs> we just, we just, uh, it, some I, bad stuff. I will say, <laughs> if I was a neutral, watching Liverpool would probably be the best game to watch all weekend because they give yeah, you a game. Because they're so risky. Or Tottenham. They let, or Tottenham. Yeah. Because they're so risky and they play with Tottenham so much fun. risk. And you tune it up and you still go. Uh, I get annoyed sometimes because we're tuning up in the game. We chase the game. Yeah. Uh, why are we chasing the game when we're tuning up? Can we just settle down and relax a little bit? Like we don't need to do this. But it's just Jurgen Klopp's way. You will never change. It's the way he plays. You know, but. You know the one that right killed me is um, when we went two 0 up at Real, um, at home to Real Madrid, and we got beat five five two. Was it five two or five three? It was five two in the end, and um, we were two 0 up at home in like twenty minutes. Just shut shop. up. Like, yeah, it's a exactly. great result. Yeah, and that Real Madrid put on the counter. That Real Madrid game always comes back to me all the time. Hate it. I did a, I did it. a watch along for that. We're two 0 up at Anfield. And I'm like, right, it's Real Madrid. Let's remember who we're playing here. It's Real Madrid. Can we just, yeah. right, we're tuning up now. That's sit. you know, let's just, let's stop chasing the, the game counter. now. Hit just on the play counter-attacking because they can't handle our counter-attack. So let's just keep playing counter-attacking. Let's not chase the game. No, no. Liverpool keep chasing the game when you lose 5-2. It's like, oh, my God, this team drives me mad. Um, But, yeah, if you really think about it, when everyone keeps saying, oh, when so-and-so turn out to Anfield, they're going to play like prime AC Milan. But when they play against Arsenal Man City, they bend over for them. Maybe that's not a coincidence anymore. Maybe it's just the fact that Liverpool, out of the top three teams in the Premier League, are the easier team to play against. And I think that's just a fact. I just you think did come fifth last season. Mm. I think that's just a fact. But look, yeah, the positives still outweigh the negative, so we're still joint top of the league with uh, Arsenal, just on goal difference separates us. Anything can still happen with seven games to go. Obviously, our next game is Crystal Palace at home. We need to go and win that game. Um, and that's all they've all got to do. I'm not bothered about who City have got and who Arsenal have got anymore. So I just expect them to win all their games. They've all just got to win every game there. They've all got seven cup finals. And in my yep. opinion, if Liverpool want to win the Premier League, Liverpool got to win all seven games. Goal yep. difference ain't going to matter if Liverpool win all seven games because I do feel like Arsenal will draw a game somewhere. They will draw a game somewhere, but yeah, Liverpool just I, got to I, win every bloody game. I really don't. I really don't want us doing a Brendan Rodgers where we're trying to score a b- bazillion goals in a game. Do you remember that? Like, I really don't want that. Like, just play our game. I don't care if it's 1-0. We just need to keep on getting three points. One of those has to drop points. 
if they don't it is what it is like it just is what it is like the new man comes in and the new man won't make the mistakes that Klopp makes he just won't you know players will get played where they're supposed to be played and you know don't be surprised don't be surprised with some changes because 3-4-3 three, three is different to what we play you know we need more defenders we need some different type of midfielders and we probably need a different type of um forward more tens or more more wider players i don't know but i'm excited for it and i'm excited for the rest of the season but we just we can't we can't let teams get in our head and you know and we can't bloody keep on conceding first like just that needs to stop <laughs> yeah we're just actually at home seems to happen at home at the moment <laughs> well uh, uh, look, let's talk about ruben ruben almarin um almarin almarin um almarin is it how do you say his name it's because... almarin it's not almarin he's the one that plays for newcastle but he's got <laughs> it's, a, it's a, an m at the end of his name so it's almarin ain't it yeah almarin yeah um right so when i've watched sport in this season to get some insight on Ruben Almerin's way he plays. He does play very much like Jurgen Klopp, but in nope. a different formation. He's very high intensity. You know, the games I've watched under him is extremely high intense. Um, but he plays a different formation. No high line. No yeah, high he line. Play, he doesn't play the high line, but he plays a high intensity, don't he? Yeah, three deep, three deep defenders. I just no. don't think... He's going to play free at the back at Liverpool. He will. I I I look at our t- we got too many midfielders. I think he'll, he get, rid, he'll, he'll, he, he'll get rid of them, mate. He, he will. I don't know. I, 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 I've got a feeling he's going to play four three three at Liverpool. I I, I think I, I literally it. I literally don't see him playing free. But we got too many midfielders. We've got too many. I, I I just don't feel like he will play because if he's going to play four three four three. Go play Trent at right wing back, obviously. Uh, Canate, Gomez, and Van Dyke is your three centre backs. Yeah, they're the three he'll, he'll have. Then you need a left wing back, which you gotta have to go and buy one. Yep. Um, then you you play a midfield two, and your midfield two will have to be a DM and Alex McAllister. That's gonna be your midfield two. That's, that's then, Endo McAllister. Then like, you've got perfect. Then you've got Curtis Jones, Sabozlai, Stefan Bassetic, Elliot. You've got a lot of midfielders there who can't really play in a double pivot. I, I'm just wondering if. I don't well, think I've think, got the players think, to I play 3 4 3. I think three. two will go. Well, Tiago will go. That's a fact. Um, Stefan will probably go out on loan because he's, he's not played. For a start, um, you know, Gravenberch. I don't think Gravenberch fits in his team, regardless. Like, he just doesn't. Um, I don't know. know he plays three, four, you look three. His, you, I mean, you look at his team. He's he's got a Japanese player in there anyway. Like, who does the who does the job of um, he does the job of uh, Endo. Um, I can't remember his name off the top of my head. Someone in the chat will know. But he's got a really good Japanese player that does does that job, and then he's got a McAllister there, which is um, uh, the one is it Hulmond? Is it Hulmond? The, is it, yeah, uh, yeah. The one the one thing I will say that I'm excited about Amaron is that he plays inside tens. So where I have wanted Sabozlai to play is that inside ten role. So it's not a wide right wing role. It's more like an inside ten. You know, playing off the striker on the, on the right side of him, basically. That is where Sabozla should play. That's his position. Um, That's spot on. Now, someone's wrote that in the chat. El Nori is is the is the guy we'll go for. I'm telling you, <laughs> yeah, El Nori. He, yeah, he's wanted him for age. He wanted it. He wanted him before before he left. Um, El Nori would be a perfect. And he has he position. has been unbelievable this season. How far forward he gets. <laughs> yeah, Maratta or Marita. Yeah, he's the guy that plays plays the endo role. I'm just I, 
I'm trying to work out what players. I, I think we need to buy a lot of players to play three four three. We need a left. We need two left wing backs. Um, we need. I think. I think Chambers. I think Chambers might. I don't think Chambers okay. I don't think any I'm, of these youth players are going to see any football next season. I I, I, pers- I personally think they'll all go out, go out on loan. If I'm honest. Yeah, the only two youth players I think will play next season are Kwanzaa and. Connor, uh, Connor Bradley, and that's it, because they're being first team regulars now. I, yeah. I just, I just don't think a lot of these youth players will play next season because a new manager's coming in. He's got new ideas. He want to do things his own way. He won't have time for all that. Um, Klopp's established, so because Klopp's established, these players can play. Like if Klopp stayed and was here next season, year after and year after, these youth boys have come through more because Klopp's established at the club and he's got his. You know, it's easier for him to do it. But a new manager, it's a lot more difficult. So you got Connor Bradley and Trent in them right wing back positions, we'd say, yeah? So that's yeah, covered. You're done, you're done there, yeah, you're done there. The left wing back, you, you, you need to buy two left wing backs. I think, I I, I do I do think that um, Costas could, could work under him, like I genuinely do. I think Costas could work under him. Um, I think Diaz he might, might, he might bring his own guy. I mean, have you seen the guy he's got called Jenny? I can't remember his his other name. I mean, he scored two. He scored two at the weekend to win to win the um to win the Porto derby, not the Porto derby, the Benfica game. Like he scored a ninety second minute winner. Like their left back scored both their goals. Like I, yeah, I don't when, think Nacho. I don't think Nacho will be the guy. Nacho ain't that good either. No, I don't, um, I don't think he'll be the guy. He's centre back anyway now, really. Yeah, Jenny, Jenny Catano scored both their goals. We we need a, we need two centre backs, two left wing backs, and a, another forward to play this three four three formation. Yeah, yeah. I just don't see us doing that. I I, I just don't see us doing that kind of transfer business. But if but if we sell but if we sell Salah, for example, there's your money. And and I'm not being funny, mate. Um, FSG will give the new manager money. New manager will get a hundred million. Guaranteed. Well, I think I think Michael Edwards coming back shows that there's going to be some kind of money because he'll want Vanderberg something as well. Like. Got a lot of players. <laughs> I'm not gonna not gonna lie. You got Owen Beck as well, by the way. <laughs> we got Carvalho. Carvalho's a weird one. See, buying Carvalho was pointless because he plays in a position that Liverpool don't want to play him in. You know, he, Carvalho... He could be, he could be the goal, Cal, goal Calvez who yeah. scores a lot of goals from midfield. Like, in the 10 position, he could really suit that position well. Yeah. Um, just, every, every time I watch Carvalho, he just seems to be very good in the Championship and not very good in the Premier League. Oh, I just, which is the I hard... Which is hard. Which is really hard as well. I just wonder if... <laughs> Carvalho is made up for Premier League football. I don't know. I, I really don't know. Um, I remember when I watched Amrabat. Not Amrabat. What's his name? Is it Amrabat? No, what's his name? Um, who's the bloke that used to play for QPR? He was excellent in championship. Tabat. Yeah, was it and, Amrabat? Uh, Tabat. Might have been another from. Amrabat, you know. <laughs> it was excellent in the championship. Played Premier League and he was terrible. I just don't know if Carvalho, what I see of him, I don't know if he's good enough for Premier League football. I, I really don't. I just don't. Yeah, um, Tarabat, that's it. Tarabat. Yeah, that's it. I Excellent in championship, terrible in Premier League football. I I, I don't know with Carvalho, man. I, I really don't. I just don't. So it looks like room now we're in Scabby Liverpool manager because apparently the rooms are he's been offered a three year contract. Um, Obviously, there's going to be a lot of talk behind the scenes. You know, Liverpool and sport, you know, Liverpool ain't going to just go, right, we'll wait till the 31st of May and then do it all on that day. Liverpool are going to be talking behind the scenes. I think, you know, Ruben Almering coming out the other day and pretty much saying that it looks like he's leaving sporting without yeah, saying he's, he's leaving me. sporting. So it looks like he's definitely going. Uh, I think his agent said the Premier League is his destination. So we could put it all together. It looks like Ruben Almerin will be Liverpool's brand new manager. At was he 38, 39 years of age? It's incredible, mate. Um he's about he's about to win the double, by the way. 
he <laughs> plays some <laughs> lovely football. He, he also can drop back if we you know he can win one nil games. It's just something yeah. I don't think Liverpool can do. Uh, it, it'd be interesting next summer if he comes in because I'd be very interested to see how he plays this. If it is the three four three, I just be really. I just don't know. Like Virgil in a back three without fullbacks. I, I, I'm not. I, I'm not convinced. I really ain't convinced that we can do three four three. I just don't didn't, know. I think we'll get, didn't Virgil did Verge play? Didn't Virgil play in a three for Celtic and Southampton? Play three in a. He plays three in a Dutch team. That looks terrible. He plays three in a Dutch team, does he? I didn't know whether they played three at the back for, it, it, for it Holland. Just, Oh, I just don't know. If I think it's easier. I, I, just, I you know, <laughs> I think it's easier. I think I think it'll help Verge as well. He won't have to do as much work. Um, he could basically play the Quartes role because Quartes is the guy that passes the ball all the time. Like he gets more passes than any other player in the um, in an Almeren team. Like he's firing those diagonals all the time. Verge will love it, honestly. And he'll probably yeah, he'll just... probably play a lot longer as well. Do you know, like he'll, it... he'll be able to play till he's like thirty six, you know, like a Pepe. It is like weird, that. like it is weird, though, as a centre back going from four at the back to three at the back, because you look for your full back cover. It, it I, I just, I, I feel like we've been, I feel like we've been playing three or two at the back this season, mate. Since yeah, we, like, <laughs> we do go into that way. I just don't know. I. I my worry I'm excited, is, mate. I'm excited. Honestly. My worry is that it's just the amount of players we're going to have to buy to play this formation. I, I, I've been wanting to play three at the back for a long time. So yeah, me too. For years. Defense, <laughs> so we're not so, because defensively, so, we're not so wide open. <laughs> defensively, I think we could play. You know, defensively, I think we'd be better. But look, Trent at right wing back absolutely cooks. Uh, oh. there, there's. You know, that's as advanced as we can get Trent in our team. No, he's not a right back anymore. The, 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 thing, the good thing about playing 3 4 3, right, is you've got three centre backs obviously at the back that cover the whole goal, right? Then one can push out and then two can sit back. Also, if you're playing 3 4 3, the wing back has got natural cover from the third centre back, which yeah. means the two in the midfield don't need to go and cover Trent's running anymore. Right, so yeah. that means you get more possession in midfield. Also, means you get Trent further up the pitch where he needs to be. You know, you don't have to count on Trent's defending anymore. You count him as a this a marauding wing back. Trent will almost play like a winger for Liverpool if he's right wing back. That's what he'll play like. My issue again, though, is the left hand side. Well, obviously, Robbo for me can't play left wing back. Simicast can't play left wing back. The only other two, the only other two who could play left wing back, and people go hate this, is Luis Diaz, and I people go go mad at that, right? I, I don't know. I don't disagree with that. By the way, I think he's a really good player, as in tracks he, back, tackles. Yeah, I, I, he, could, I he could do that job. By the way, I think he could play Luis Diaz as a left wing back because Luis Diaz could play left sided midfield in a four four two. Yep, I also think Curtis Jones could play there as well. By the way, yeah, Curtis Jones could play he's there. He's a wide player, naturally. That's a really good shout, by the way. Someone's just wrote in the chat. <laughs> Hughes could go back and raid Bournemouth for a load of players. Yeah. And they've got they've got some decent players, by the way. Um, Kirk is, is a good player, Hungarian international. Um, you know, Alex Scott, brilliant player. And someone's wrote in there. Um there's a guy, there's a guy to, release clause. Oh god no. What um, a target man that is. I, I literally think people like Dominic Solanke and um, the guy at Villa, what's his name? What Ollie Watkins. Uh, Ollie Watkins are just having purple patch seasons. I, I literally think they're just having purple patch seasons because no oh, one was Ollie, asking from last season or season before. Ollie Watkins hit 20 goals last season, mate. Ollie Watkins no, is the real deal. Like, I think he's saying purple patch. He's not a very good footballer. He's a system player under a good system, and since that system, I, I actually, broken. I actually like um, Marcus Tavener. By the way, I think he's a, I think he's a sensational player. I like um, the guy from, Bob I like the midfield. I'm going to say something right now, and I think Liverpool should buy him. I like the guy from Leeds, the midfielder from Leeds. Archie Gray. 
Archie Gray, I think, is a, a yeah. tremendous player. He's, he's really young, though, isn't he? He's I, another really I, young one. I think Archie Gray is special, man. I think Archie Gray is special. And I think there's going to be a lot of big teams in for Archie Gray. And Liverpool yeah. should be one of them. I think, I, I think his player. price will be ridiculous, you know. Uh, Josh <laughs> says, why can't Robbo do it, Jamie? I don't think Robbo's got the energy to play no. the wing-back role anymore. If Robbo was, if Robbo was 27, 26, I'd say, yeah, no problem. But... The wing back role is also is almost what you see of a lot of wing backs now. If you look at a lot of wing backs in football, a lot of them are wingers or midfielders that have been converted to a wing back. They're not all, you know, the wing back role will be a very, you know, they'll be asked to get forward quite a lot and defence cover. I just don't think Robbo's got the energy to play left wing back. Al Nori has, and he's the technically better footballer. Than Robbo as well. Um, see, I think Simic, so. I think Simicass is technically a better footballer than Robbo. Yeah. Ro- Robbo's game is about high energy. That's Robbo's game. And when Robbo ain't got that high energy, he's not the same player. He's just not the same player. Um, um, Liverpool yeah, could have signed uh, Kudus, but yeah. Yeah, we don't yeah. want to talk about the players we could have signed because Liverpool we could have signed a lot of Gakpo. players. Liverpool decided to get Gakpo instead. I mean, yeah. Liverpool could have signed Ronaldo under Benitez, by the way, but that's another story. Yeah, yeah we're actually in for him, man. Actually in for him. And Sergio so, Aguero. I, I, I think Liverpool are going to have to do, obviously, a lot of the transfer window once Ruben Almarin comes in. There's play, because if he does stay, play the three at the back, Trent, obviously, is the obvious one at right wing back. Um, if Salah oh, yeah. leaves, if Salah leaves, a front three would probably be Jota, Darwin, and uh, Sabozlai for me. Uh, Jota is that inside left, uh, Sabozlai on the inside right, and Darwin as your main forward. That'd be your foot front three. Um, Diaz at this moment in time would be my left wing back, and the Endo and McAllister would be my midfield pairing in the middle. And Trent is my right wing back. That would probably be with the players that we got at the club right now. they would be the players that are playing a 3-4-3. Three, three. But we'd have to really go and buy players, guys. We really would. You know, we I think I think we need I think we need three. Which I've always said to be fair. Um and I think three would go. Like maybe even maybe even more, but I think I I, I could see I could see five players going next season. And two of them are going on free transfers anyway. So three of them are going on free transfers. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Kirkes is only like twenty-one years old as well. Like, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't be surprised if someone if they signed like a couple of players you've never even heard of. You know, look, they they do it. Like the pair the pair of them sat there and talked about Allison and Salah before anyone even knew who they were. Like, you know, they're real talent spotters. So. They would already know a few players. And I would uh, be surprised if we man. raided our, um, South America more under these guys. Yeah, look, I, I'm excited by the fact of next season because if Ruman Almarin does come in, he's going to be our manager. We're going to play a completely different way. No more high line, maybe three at the back. It's exciting to see how that comes together. Yeah. It's a new time, a new experience as a Liverpool fan been used to what we've been under with Jurgen Klopp. So I'm looking forward to it, guys. And look, to leave this on a positive note, look, Liverpool are still on 71 points. We're still top of the league. Just join. You know, Arsenal <laughs> have got a better goal <laughs> difference right now. There's seven games to go. That's been positive here. Let's keep the positivity just flowing, yeah? We can still win the Premier League. We just, For me, Liverpool have just got to win seven games in a row. That's all we got to do. And if we don't win the Premier League after winning seven games in a row, and we lose it on goal difference. It's just what it is. You know, that we've is, got to finish that it. would be so stinky. I'm sorry. Yeah, it would be. Uh, big up on, league, has uh, anyone ever lost the league on goal difference? Like the Premier League? Uh, was it Man City beat Man United, wasn't it? Um, was, that goal, it was that goal difference? Yeah, it was goal was difference, it? yeah. It's oh, a myth that Klopp makes players better. Who's he actually gotten better since they've come in? Oh, Pond Elf. I think McAllister's better. I think McAllister's been... Is better. Oof, oof, Endo's oof. better. 
<laughs> right, Pondell, uh, thanks for the super chat, man. But I'm going I'm to leave that, that in many. your Pondell. I'm going to leave that in your own lap. I'm not. Yeah, gonna, I don't, I don't gonna, know that many. I, I'm going to leave that in your own lap, man. I'm going to leave that in your own lap. <laughs> I'm not big up Pondell for the super, but I'm staying out of that one. Big up, man. No, appreciate the love. Um, guys, we're going to leave it there, though. Guys, when this video finishes, you go all be redirected to Coppish. Coppish alive right now. So when this video ends, you're going to be redirected to Coppish. So go over there and say, Jamie sent you. Get in the live chat and say, Jamie sent you. Um, big up to everyone. Thank you very much for joining us today. Appreciate it. See you again soon. Bye-bye for now. Up the reds.